Uh, right now, joining us on the phone, Buffalo's favorite son and heavyweight bass player extraordinaire, Billy Sheehan. How you doing, Billy? I'm doing great. Thank you. That's uh, it's quite an intro. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for taking some time to talk to us. Uh, you are a busy, busy, busy man. Uh, I Facebook stalk you, I'll admit it. Uh, what do you got going on right now? Well, I just got back from doing uh, five shows with a gentleman by the name of Eddie Jobson. He played with a, uh, a uh, progressive band in the 70s called UK. Uh, was part of King Crimson, was uh, played with Frank Zappa, a bunch of things like that. And he uh, he did five shows, uh, three in Japan, uh, one East Coast, one West Coast. So I, I joined him for that. Now I'm home uh, doing a bunch of... Uh, writing and recording for upcoming uh, one of my records, for an upcoming Niacin record, and also a new Mr. Big record. Fantastic. And, and Mr. Big was just doing some stuff in Asia, correct, if I remember right? Uh, we did a European tour, uh, and also we played uh, in Japan and Southeast Asia. Yeah, amazing. Just I mean, it just seems like you, you never, ever, ever stop. Um, and you... Uh, you seem to still have a passion that you had when you were a kid for it. Is that true? Is that true? Uh, you know, almost even more. I think I, I, I play and practice and work on it almost more than I than I did. But uh, uh, it, it really never goes away. That's the one thing I'm most thankful for is that I can still sit down with my bass and enjoy it and uh, learn something new every single day. And uh, it's a riot. Uh, music is the greatest art form. I, I totally agree with you. I um. I own a local music store, I own the Music Exchange here, and obviously host the show, and the one thing that I find so funny is, there are so many Billy Sheehan stories, and I don't know if half of them are just people, you know, <laughs> pretending, but I'm telling you, according according to the tally that I've taken at my store, you knew everybody in Buffalo, you jammed with everybody in Buffalo, and I think everybody's sister at one time dated you, so I don't know how you ever had time to learn the bass bill, to be hilarious, honest. Hilarious, that's hilarious, <laughs> yeah, how many times I hear somebody, yeah, I used to live with my, my buddy's sister, you know, well, I, I know... Exactly who I live with and 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 uh, who is around. It must have been and, a uh, commune from the way, <laughs> you know, from the way. But that's interesting. Let's let's talk about the beginning because your bass playing style has influenced so many people, and you have such such an original style. Where did that style of yours come from? Uh, basically, a combination of things. A guy named Paul Samuel Smith and the Yardbirds was the first guy I heard uh, who I really paid attention to on bass. Uh, and, and he was a wild man. He, he played a lot of great notes and did a lot of uh, counterpoint to the three guitarists that were in uh, uh, the Yardbirds, I believe, Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page, Jeff Beck. And uh, he kept up with them quite well, in fact. And I saw so that it kind of set the pace. And then uh, the little punch came out, and Tim Bogart was the bass player. And he was uh, uh, another great, great uh, active player who really took things melodically up and down the but still managed to make the band just sound really solid. Then uh, playing in Talos all those years with Dave and Paul, it was a three-piece band, uh, I had to make up, well, all of us had to make up for the lack of other people, so we all had to do more than just play. We had to play and sing and then always do extra things, so as bass player, if there wasn't a keyboard player or a second guitarist to do a solo or a, a little section uh, musically, I kind of had to do it somehow on bass to kind of mimic it. And uh, so a combination of all those things kind of pushed me into a spot where I, I just had to do more and, uh, and enjoyed it. And I didn't know any better that uh, I remember I remember early on people telling me, oh, you can't play chords on bass. And I, I already did. I said, well, should I stop now? Because I, <laughs> I can play chords on bass and anyone can, you know. And uh, uh, so uh, over the years, one of the most important aspects of it was performing live. And being in front of people, and there it gave me a chance to fine tune anything I knew or anything I was learning, and fine tune it to something that's actually useful and and something I can do and something that might actually uh, be pleasing to people. So all those factors put together, and God knows what else, and uh, and here I am, I guess. Yeah, and that's and that's you know, like you say, it's just it's it's one of those things. I guess it's hard to pinpoint in words, but it just it evolved, and you know, and, and thank God it. it it did. Locally, did you have any local in influences when you were growing up here in, in Western New York? Yeah, a guy named Joe Hesse. He was a bass player for a band most people remember uh, called The Road. He actually lived around the corner from me, and he was the guy who started me playing bass. Had, before The Road, it was the Rockin' Paramounts was his band. And then the Beatles came out, 
changed everything. So they became the road. And uh, and Joe is my friend, still my friend to this day. He lives out in L.A. here now. And uh, I just uh, got an email from him yesterday. And we see each other often. And he's his dear friend. And he was a bass player. And he was one of the top guys around. And the road was a huge band in Buffalo way back in the way back before the day even, not even in the day. And uh, uh, he was a big influence. Uh, and then there, we, it was quite a musical town. We had a million great players, you know, all over the place. Uh, we had uh, uh, Donnie Tomasulo on the other day as a guest, talking about the old Ben Hansel days and, of course, the old Talis days. And uh, he, yeah. he said the same thing. At that time, there was, you know, it was like this wonderful renaissance of Buffalo music and live music and it was the perfect storm here in buffalo uh the clubs the the people out to see it the economy was a little bit stronger um and you were definitely you know the, the leading force your band was the leading force of that i feel um it was it was well, a great thanks. time uh, but before us though there was a that scene that scene started way before us too i remember even earlier on some some uh folks uh, a little bit older than than us uh there was, uh, you know, Wilmer and the Dukes. There was uh, uh, Raven. There was um, uh, the Raven with Gary Oliver. Right, exactly. Uh, Barbara Sinclair and the Pincushions, uh, the Road, uh, uh, all these bands earlier on. Uh, there was a big scene in Buffalo for a long time. Uh, I think it's a place called the Town Casino. McVans by the River was actually a it wasn't it wasn't a punk rock club. It was a it was it was quite a uh, exquisite uh, dinner club. And uh, it all had music. Uh, the Glen Casino was another place. I think I saw Bobby Dare in there. I went with my mom. No uh, kidding. The early, the, one of the earliest uh, musical memories ever. But all major artists came through Buffalo. It was an important place. Everybody kind of had to play there. And it was really one of the cities uh, that was referred to with, with the uh, saying, you know, if you can be big in Buffalo, you can be big anywhere. And that was one of the, Buffalo is one of the cities they, that that quote was regarded as. Uh, so um, it, it's a, it was a very, very, very important city musically. And uh, uh, an important city for, for the whole country, too. Most of uh, everything that came through the Great Lakes had to come through Buffalo at one point or another. So it's such a crossroads. Uh, so many people, so much commerce and so much uh, uh, influence. Uh, it was, there, there it was. And uh I still look fondly on the, the days we had in the in the 70s. I started playing about 71 out of out of high school. About 70, 71, we started playing live, and uh, from there all through the 70s and uh, right up to the mid 80s, uh, it was still a, quite a vibrant music scene. I, I, and I don't see why it couldn't be again, too. You know, it, you know, it, it, and I'm, it, things go in ebbs and flows and ups and downs. And I still think that you know part of the part of the mission statement of the show that we do here is. Uh, is to really make people aware of the level of talent in Buffalo. I've always said, you know, depending on, with the exception of going to a city that's designed for music, you know, Memphis, Nashville, um, New Orleans, I, Buffalo has the best players in the world, and, and you're living proof of it. I, that's, that's the way I feel. Oh, that's very kind of you. Uh, yeah, there's great players in Buffalo, and there's great music, and I think uh, it's funny what, what would be the catalyst that would bring that about. Uh, uh, why, why did Seattle suddenly become... You know, the Seattle Sound. You know, there was a couple bands, a couple of clubs, and people started to take notice and get into it and listen. And next thing you know, there was Nirvana, Pearl Jam, and uh, a whole long list of, of others that, that were the Seattle Sound. Uh, you know, there's no reason the world why there couldn't be a similar thing in Buffalo, you know, uh, what it takes. And it's you know, uh, one thing I'm always preaching to musicians about it doesn't take some promoter or somebody with money or some, you know, it takes a great player in a great band to go out and make it happen so it really is in the hands of musicians to make a renaissance no no one else makes a renaissance but the but the artists who create the art you know and it's, it's that's all it really is to it and um it could happen in buffalo and uh, i'm i'm always looking for somebody that uh, that can start it off and uh, do whatever i can to support it well that's, that's fantastic and it's true what you said is true do you 